And if that's, if that's, if that's shared between churches, surely within the church, surely within Second Baptist, Surely within the ushers ministry, surely within the choir ministry, surely within the deacon, surely within the trustees, surely within all the auxiliary, we ought to be able, if we're all praying, all trying to walk in the spirit, all trying to, you know, live by the word. Because the church at its core is a people, a people praying, a people in the spirit, a people walking in the word, boldly proclaiming the word, but also a people that are united. Yeah. Amos 3, 3, how can two walk together unless they agree? Ah, the church at its core is not divided. That's man. That's power. That's greed. That's all that other stuff. That's position. That's all that other stuff that gets in the way. That's the flesh. Because the flesh needs to be divided. The flesh needs all that. But when you're walking in the spirit, I don't mind if you shine. If you're walking in the spirit, I don't mind if you get the glory. If we're walking in the spirit, it's all for the kingdom of God. I don't care if you go first and I go last. What difference does it make? We all are serving the king. We're all serving the Lord. We're all just servants of the most high. What difference does it make? Who's got a title and who doesn't? Matter of fact, we don't need any title. Let's just call each other by what our mamas called us because that's the name that she gave us. But let's give, let's give God all the honor and glory because why should we try to be up and above each other or separate or divided or allow stuff to get in the mix to, when the reality is uh, none of us are nothing but sinners saved by grace. Walking on one accord, one heart, one mind. Then it says this, whew, this gets crazy. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. But they shared everything that they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there was no needy person among them. From time to time, someone would sell property or something and bring the thing to their feet, and they could sell, and they would use that to distribute it. I just kind of summarized that. But look, not only the church of people that pray, spirit-filled, in the word of God, unified, but also they are caring and sharing. Mm. You don't share unless you care. You don't care unless the, you know the spirit of the Lord has grabbed you and has inflicted you with love. I like that, inflicted with love. Afflicted, I like, I, that's why I tell you, I want to be afflicted. I want to I wanna have it on, I can't, I can't stop it. It's taken over me. I want to be afflicted with love. When God's spirit has afflicted you with love, you can't help but care. You say, I don't even want to care, but you, but you, you, you got to because there's something in you that is operating and is empowered and it's being powered by the grace of God. When you've got a heart that's powered by grace, it constantly reminds you that you didn't deserve grace. You deserve God's goodness. You deserve God's love. And so because if that's powering you, you have a tendency to be generous when others won't be generous, to be loving when folk are unlovable, to be kind when folk haven't been kind to you, especially when folk are good to you, you're kind. Especially when they love you, you're loving. But there's something that's powering you that says, no matter what I'm going to do for them, no matter what I'm going to be good and kind and loving and honorable and noble because I've done my heart hearts being powered by the grace of God. Because look what it said. It said, and the grace of God was so powerfully working in them all that they had a sense where if another brother or sister needed something and they had it because they cared, they shared. Whew, that's heavy. Now see, now see, I have to admit, I know I admit, this is one of those scriptures where the pulpit pimps try to, try to twist. You see the text says where the lady had stuff at the apostles' feet and said, now they tell you that's why the people throw money on the pulpit some places sometimes. Don't you dare do that here. Oh, you know, that money don't always go to poor folk. Amen. I know that go into somebody's pocket. I ain't no fool. I know exactly what that stuff is doing. If in the book of Acts, in all the rest of the New Testament, almost exclusively when they talked about giving, it was for those in need almost exclusively. 
what must the church be about at its core? Now, we got bills now and all that kind of stuff, but we still got to pay Virginia Power. We want them to come turn the lights off. Got to pay our taxes and all that kind of stuff. I get that. But at the church at its core is a church that cared about the members in such a way that if there was a need, the need was taken care of. Now, I'm going out on a limb, but, you know, I'm just getting old now. So at this point, you just do what you say you're going to do. I'm trying to work on something. I'm working on it right now. And I've talked to a few folk about it. We're going to come up with this thing called care and share. This folk going to have some needs, and there's going to be people that can meet those needs. And we're going to match up the people that have it with those who don't have it. And we're going to do that ongoing. Um, and y'all get mad at me if you want, but that's, this is what I feel the Spirit of the Lord lead me on this. Now, see, immediately we say that I'm the devil getting this, that somebody's going to take advantage. I don't care. Somebody going to try to use the church. People use the church all the time. Right? That's, not, that's not my point. Our issue is I want to get into the place where no member of Second Baptist has a need that we haven't tried to meet. From this point on. Now, if you have the need and you don't tell us about it, we are not magicians. Amen. We will do the best that we can do, but we're going to, because see, I think that we got a church at its core has to be caring and sharing. And that might mean you might need somebody to go help you out with your, your older mother, and you might need somebody to help you to stay at the house while you go shopping, to go grocery shopping. Or it may be some you might need a ride to the doctor's office. It might be something where you need some groceries. I, I don't know whatever it is. Amen. Now, we're not paying off credit card bills. We're not paying for the cable man. We're not paying your cell phone bill. That's not happening. But the real needs, I want nobody thinking you can roll up here with Fios cable and we're going to pay the no. That's not happening. You know, there's going to got to be some rules. But this, there's three things. I don't want nobody without, without clothes, without food, and without shelter. Not in this church. Not in this church. If you part of us, and so that means we got to get a food pantry up. We got to make sure our clothes closet there. We got to make sure our employment ministry is functioning like it's supposed to. We want to help people get work, help. Whatever it needs. If you need, we need to send the young men over there to cut your grass because you can't. You getting too old. We're gonna send the young men. We're gonna. We're gonna. Whatever it is. That's you know. I mean, we just gotta be. There's a church at its core. That's what we gotta be about. That's all I have. Stand to your feet. Come on, choir.